Hey everybody, good afternoon and welcome to today's lesson. I am Sami Abu Saad, Director of Education at T3 Live. Again, welcome to our weekly Tuesday night lessons. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you are doing well. Uh, today's lesson is going to be about, uh, it's going to be part two to last week's lesson, which was about uh, swing and long term trading. Okay, how to scan for swing and long-term trading, part two. I uh, hope you enjoyed last week's lesson. I, re I received lots of emails, um, so I assume you did. And I'm going to recap what we discussed last week. And then we're going to also, I'm gonna show you how to, what to do with the final list, okay? What to do with the final list that you generate in your, like let's say TC2000, which is the platform that I use. Before I start, uh, please uh, make sure to read this disclaimer. To let, uh, and it, what it is is it lets you know that trading is risky, but more importantly for me and T3, it lets you know that um, whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only, okay? Not to be construed as investment advice. With that said, with that out of the way, let's turn on TC2000, which is my scanning software w for um uh, for swings. Now, I want to just do a quick recap of what I discussed last week. I said the way to generate, the way I generate my list is I go to watch lists. It's a, it's a, it's an icon in the kind of the upper left corner of TC2000. I go to US stocks, okay, and then I click on scan, and then I select the conditions. The conditions are, I just want uh, to make sure price, uh, let me just see, select conditions, uh, no, add a condition, add a condition, then I type price, and then I want to make sure price is above $1, okay? Anything above a dollar is good, but I also want to make sure that the uh, stock has about 500,000 shares or more per day, so I go to volume. And then I just type 500,000 for value. Okay, I hit OK. And then I hit scan. And now, it, as you can see, it found 1430, 1400 stocks. This is a lot, and you don't have to cover the entire list. So what you can do is scan only once on the weekend and save your list and kind of eat off of it basically find ideas from that list during the week, which is what I do. Or if you have time, you want to scan the 1400 stocks, go for it. If once you get good at it, you can scan three per second, pretty much. I can go three per second. Once I like something, I flag it. To flag it, you have to go shift, hold the shift key down and then F. And once you're done flagging the items that you like, sort it by the flagged, by flag, and then you have the list. Then you can copy that list, and I'm gonna show you what to do with that list later on. Um, I attach, uh, so this thing that you see here, floating around this watch list, if you click on the this uh, arrows, whatever, button in the upper right corner, you can attach it to the left, right, upper or bottom, uh, top or bottom side of the chart. I have it here on the left side of the chart, so I just did that for you, but it's already there. And um, this is for day trading, um, but it's the same for swing trading. What it is, guys and gals, is that this is the truth. Stocks can correct through price or time. As such, there are ultimately only two patterns really truly. In reality, there's only two patterns to look for. Buy setups or pullbacks and base breakouts or breakdowns if we're talking short. Does that make sense? Everything else is a variation. There is though one other pattern and that is we can add climactics, okay? But that's not gonna be your primary source of plays at all. I have a specialist in the room. I have actually more than one. I have two, but one of them has been with me, trading with me in the room for the last uh, 11 or 12 years now. Ever since, uh, oops, ever since I started, pretty much, okay? 
um, in the room as a mo as a head moderator has been training and the only thing they do is climactics. I have a, a number of students in the room that trade only climactics, but one of them ever since I started. So, but for the most part, for most people, that's not something you want to do because they're highly volatile. There's very, very few good ones out there on a daily basis, very, very few. So you want to stick with really the two prominent, the, the, almost the only two patterns that exist, which is buy setups or pullbacks and then breakouts. Now, what's a pullback? Just to be sure we're on the same page. A pullback is when you have a stock that's in an uptrend, in an uptrend, and then starts to pull back towards usually the rising 20 support. There should be some support here. And then you want the pullback to be in the range of 40 to 60% of the prior rally. Does that make sense? So that's called a pullback or a buy setup. It's the same. The, the buy setup it's called a buy setup when it triggers, okay? A breakout, we all know what a breakout, here it is. Base breakout, so sideways and then a pop. It's like a chair that's missing a leg right here. <laughs> a chair missing a leg, that's what a breakout is. And that, my friends, is a breakout failure, okay? But, um, so that's what you wanna look for, either pullbacks or if, it's a, if the stock is in a downtrend, a rally and a sell setup, right? or or breakouts or breakdowns. The stock must be above a 45 degree 20 MA that's also above the 200 MA if we wanna play it long. Exceptions, for sw this is for day trading. For, for swing trading, you know, so here's some exceptions. Exceptions would be A, climactics. It doesn't have to be above a rising 20, right? B, uh, and just so we're all on the same page, climactics is when the stock falls out of the sky and goes vertical. Okay, like ITSI, ITS, ITCI today. Uh, so climactics or transition A plays. They don't have to be above the 200. I'll show you maybe that later. But for the most part, we're not. I don't, I'm not here to talk about the exceptions and discuss things in. In, in detail here, I'm trying to give you kind of a some framework to work with. You want to look for stocks that are above, that are trending up above a 45 degree 20 MA. How do you know it's a 45 degree? It goes from the left side of the chart from here to there. That's how you know it's a 45 degree 20 MA. Does that make sense? Goes from the left side of the chart to the upper right side of the chart. Bottom left to upper right. Above above the 200 MA, the 200 MA moving average gives us, tells us whether the stock is overall being bought or sold. In the long run, is it a really bear stock or a b bullish stock? For example, the stock is, a, is below the 200. What does that tell you? It's, it's bearish. It's bearish on the daily. It's bearish on the weekly. It's bearish on the monthly. Does that make sense? So that's why we want when we're playing long, again, assuming a long position here or we're scanning for bullish we want it to be above the 200 when you look at the stock you also want to have what we call at t3 a tradable void a tradable void means there's no resistance how do you find resistance you find it by looking to the left you don't find it by diagonally like a lot of people do you look to the left if there's to the left if there's congestion right? If there's a failure pattern, rounding top, whatever, then you have resistance. So we want to have a tradable void, okay? Because those are the stocks that will, would have the best odds to reach target, okay? Best if the stock is gapping. Again, this list, uh, this is for day trading that I, that I created for my students, but for swing trading, it doesn't have to be gapping, obviously. You want to have a stock that has momentum. Momentum means multiple red bars in a row multiple when it moves it moves in the same direction multi, with multiple bars of the same color red 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 green 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 you don't want to have the christmas tree effect red green red green red green that means it doesn't have any momentum you don't it means no one group is in control really the buyers are not in control the sellers are not in control why are you in it you only want to bet on stocks where it's clear which group is winning. Does that make sense? So we want to have momentum. Uh, 
we want to have enough reward to risk. So if if you put in your your, I mean, if you if you determine once you determine your entry, your stop, and your target, the the stock needs to have enough reward to risk. Reward. So if we're you know again, I'm just doing this so that we're all on the same page. Reward. Reward is the difference is target is the difference between target minus the entry. Does that make sense? Risk is your stop size. It's the same, which is the entry minus the stop price. Does that make sense? So if the if the if the target is twenty dollars and the entry was eighteen, then your your reward zone, your reward zone or reward area would be two dollars. And if your entry was we said is eighteen and the stop was seventeen, your your risk would be one dollar. In this case, it would have two to one because we said target twenty, entry eighteen. That's two. That's two dollar target. The risk we said entry eighteen, stop seventeen. That's one dollar. So two to one. That would be good. So you want to look for plays that are that have a minimum of two to one. In the last one hundred plays that I that I did with strategic swing traders that that we closed out of. We have like 11 plays open right now. We have a lot of plays open. But in the last 100 trades that I that we took, we averaged 3 to 1 reward to risk. 3 to 1. You know how good that is? That is phenomenal. If you can get 3 to 1, because a lot of plays don't make it to the target. So if you can get 3 to 1, that's phenomenal. At any rate, um, so the stock ha must have enough reward to risk. And lastly, really don't ignore your intuition or your feel for the stock and the next likely move that it's going to make. We often have a feel for where the stock is going. Does that make sense? You often have a feel for it. I ignored it for the longest time ever. Because why? I'm an accountant by trade. I pride myself on being rational, objective. I pride myself on... so. So listening to my intuition and my gut feeling was something I didn't want to do until it's a long story. I won't tell you how I, how I had that light bulb moment, long story, but don't ignore it because your intuition is basically your experience is telling you something. Your brain might not be able to analyze it and figure out why you're getting this kind of message or you're getting this kind of feeling. You might not be able to to exactly uh, logically understand why, but it's because you've seen, you've been in this situation before. Probably you've seen it before. So what I mean by intuition here, I don't mean to get all esoteric, experience, basically. But I'm not going to write, don't ignore your experience. Okay, just don't ignore the voice of your experience or your intuition, voice of your experience. So those are some guidelines to go uh, uh, to go off of okay when scanning and and then and then after that it's a matter of practice you just practice okay once you get good at it uh, as I said I go three per second because I don't stop and, and don't stop and analyze something unless it stands out now how do I do that I do that by focusing on the most recent price action I just look here most recent price action. Is there something interesting? If there is, then I flag it. If there isn't, I don't waste my time analyzing, oh, this breakout failures, the failure, this nice breakdown here. I why waste your time? It's already gone, done. So only focus on the upper, uh, on the, on the price action the last few days. And if, so if there's something interesting, then you can, you can flag it and look at it and show you what to do now with the items that you flagged. Now I can't go through the entire list or even through more than like 20 with you because it'll take us too long. Uh, you might say, well, what about BAC? I do, by the way, I sort it by volume, forgot to mention this, because if I don't cover 14, the, the entire list, at least I will have covered the most liquid stocks first. So I sort my list by volume. You might say, oh, B BAC, this is good, isn't it? Yes, it is good, but are you? Are we in it? If you're not in it already, it's too late. Does that make sense? 
So this something like BSE would I would not flag. It's too late. Does that make sense? You might say, well, what about if it were to give you a pullback back to the rising 20? Wouldn't that be interesting? Yes, it would be. But I'll find it because I, I look, I scan every day. So I don't need to flag it today. It's already too late. And if it pulls back and sets up again, I'll find it. Does that make sense? Um, and BSE isn't all that good because it has, resi it has a limited target, right? It has resistance. I like plays that don't have much resistance. All right, so you know that's what I scan for. Um, I had, um, I just want to show, show you this real quick. Merck, yesterday we discussed, somebody said, isn't that a sell setup? Yes, but what did I say? When you're looking for shorts, you want the, the moving average to be coming from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner of the chart. Does that make sense? You don't want this kind of a moving average that's, that just turned bearish just like recently. Why? Because it means the stock is in an uptrend on the larger time frame. So if you look at the weekly, see, that's not a short. That's the weekly chart. Monthly, that's not a short. That's at all-time highs. So does that make sense? You don't want to be looking for sell setups that come from that are just recent bearishness. You want to be looking for stocks that are in an all-out bearish downtrend. Like let's just say top. That's in an all-out bearish downtrend. Beautiful, coming from the upper left to the bottom right under the 200 45 degree 20 does that make sense now is this really good no it's it wouldn't it's not even good enough to do as a short you know why because it doesn't have enough reward to risk remember i said to support it needs to have enough reward to risk two to one that doesn't even have two to one but i'm just showing you kind of the picture of what to look for does it meet all the criteria no it doesn't but this is the kind of stock that you actually want to look for um, and then if you haven't watched some of my older recordings you might want to do that because or you might want to find a, a video where I talk about the basic unit because my swing trades swing trading strategies are based on the basic unit what's the basic unit the basic unit says all stocks go through a four stage uh, cycle Sometimes they don't go all the way back down. Sometimes they go even below the prior low. They go through a four-stage cycle. Uh, something like, uh, let's see, I don't remember something off the top of my mind, maybe triple D. You see how it was in a uh, uptrend, then down, then now basing. Uh, what else? I mean, uh, you guys in the room, do you know of a stock that, ha that shows the four-stage cycle nicely? But something like this, that's good enough, right? So all stocks go through a cycle like this. And so if you know that, that gives you that, that uh, puts the odds in your favor. Uh, because, because then you know that here you want to look to play long as the stock breaks out, right? And then uh, when it breaks down here, it's the same thing. That's called transition A. That's called transition C and and then when it ends when it ends the uptrend if it goes climactic you can short it but if it doesn't go climactic you can short the breakdown so those are the transitions so i do the four transitions i don't do all four on the same stock i do two at the most depending on how the stock sets up so a and c or a and b that's called b if it goes climactic not c so it's either A and B or A and uh, A and C. And then if it bottoms here, but that's, you know, we're talking much later, then I can do transition D, which is if it goes climactic at the bottom. So those are the four transitions. But then I also, while the stock is in an uptrend, I look for breakouts and pullbacks. While the stock is in a stage four downtrend, right here on the right side of the, the, the drawing here, I look for sell setups and breakdowns. So for example, top would be in its, in its stage four downtrend. Does that make sense? It hasn't bottomed yet. So I look for sell setups, breakdowns. What's a sell setup? We already talked about this. That's a sell setup. That's a sell setup. That was a sell setup. That was a sell setup. 
and we now have another sell setup okay let's look at it on the monthly chart see this also has the four stage cycle it's not the best I've ever seen but basically let me zoom out a little bit you see what I mean it bottomed here went higher put in a top and then dropped and now it's in a, the stage four part of the cycle so on the way up you look for longs on the way down you look for shorts and then if you can catch it when it you know when it goes climactic like right here or if you can catch it at the top wonderful that's transition a or that, that would it never really had a good transition a, at least not based on the monthly here does that make sense so that would have been a transition D because it, it came from a four stage cycle right here before that does that make sense and then before that it came from another cycle and before that it was I'm sure another cycle they're not always very clean and clear but they, it always has the, those cycles I know what some of you are thinking do you want me to guess what you're thinking oh head and shoulders oh what a beauty head and shoulders <laughs> yes head and shoulders but it doesn't matter really a head and shoulders pattern is a breakout failure pattern so okay so with that said I already scanned the list I mean I already I didn't scan 1400 but I scanned 250 I think before I came on the mic um, after the close or maybe 300 um, and I'm gonna show you now what I do with the list so I, I just use TC2000 to find the initial list and then here is what I do with it I'm gonna now turn on the other charts this is real tick and I have the the list I use da the daily chart to find the pattern so these all have patterns on the daily chart at least they're supposed to have and then to the left of that is the hourly chart which is what I use for entries I need to make sure that the daily looks good as far as a pattern it has to have a pattern a breakout or a pullback and then there are other strategies too right but these are the primary two, two and then on the hourly chart it also needs to be set up nicely so let me go ahead and show you let's go over the list and show you what it is so AMRX what is this that's a climactic so this would be transition D now if you wait for it on on the monthly chart to trigger your stop will be humongous right so you don't want to do that you could play it off the weekly right here if you like it enough over 374 right over 380 it actually triggered today stop 318 because it's already triggered today or you can also play it if you think no no this is not done you can also play it for like a dead cat bounce just a small bounce back to the declining 20 so this has a transition a on the hourly chart which it triggered already and then a nice healthy target up there as a swing as a long-term trade you don't have to take it there you can wait for it to reach seven bucks which is kind of the target on the larger time frame now do I think it's going back to seven bucks I don't think so so that would be my target but I go over the list and then I find I make sure that like this is a buy setup I make sure that the hourly looks good does the hourly in this case look good does it look good what do you guys think does it look good if you're on social media feel free to participate I can check the comments later on just make sure you type the symbol but I'm really here also talking to my students in the coaching uh, room does it look good and the answer is no it really doesn't why because we want the hourly 20 minutes to start to curl up point up it's already starting so it's okay it's not the worst I've ever seen but we also have multiple green bars in a row so what what I uh, what I have to do with this if I like it is to let it go and then look for another buy setup off of the rising 20 MA or again it can either give you a buy setup or a base or if it goes up and bases the 20 MA will catch up to it and then I can play the breakout long right here stop right here does that make sense so I gotta I, I ha you have to make sure that the daily lines up with the hourly matches up with the hourly chart okay so BKD is not ready so I don't you know so now I, I keep it on the list for tomorrow but I don't put it on my favorites list that's my favorites list it's empty my favorites list so from this list I generate a favorites list the favorites list are the ones that I'm that I look to play and then what I do is I, I put them in the spreadsheet 
it tells me whether the stock has enough reward to risk and if it does then I play it and I actually share my plays with the strategic swing trader members okay at the moment I think we have 11 positions open only two are negative one is even slightly break even everything else is positive okay uh, so BKD no look at this CPB that's setting up as a breakout that's not bad over the base stop under it does the hourly chart look good does it have a rising 20 does it is it uh, you know does it have a base or a pullback no it doesn't so it's not ready so it should be on tomorrow's list as a watch but I'm not gonna go ahead and make a call on it just yet does that make sense CVS is a buy setup the same as the BKD already rallied multiple bars up in a row so it's gonna have a big stop the 20 MA on the hourly chart hasn't curled up yet so I'm gonna pass for now and look for the next buy setup on the hourly chart notice on the weekly it looks pretty good too transition a on the weekly now I know what also some of you are thinking that oh wait a second this is not a bullish stock why are we, we want to play it because I'm looking for swings I'm not saying this is a core long I'm not saying this is long and I'm gonna keep it until it goes to 100 bucks no I'm just saying this is a swing long just from here to here to the prior resistance just a few days that's fine does that make sense it actually looks good on the weekly but it doesn't look great on the monthly monthly has a limited target as you can see right to there that's about it so to 60 bucks if I if it get, just gets to 60 bucks it'll be wonderful a, a wonderful play EGBN this is tough because uh, this is not really a climactic I mean this is you know when we're looking for climactic moves we're looking for multiple bars in a row not just one when it's just one bar means it's a fresh brand new breakdown which this was so this is very aggressive if you look at the monthly chart what's happening with this stock well my friends you should know by now what's happening with this it has it had a stage one and then stage two uptrend stage three the top the rounding top you can go ahead and point out the head and shoulders I don't care and then the transition C so it's rolling over it looks lower to here it does uh, so that's the four stage cycle right you as you can see it's it's already oops it's already you, you we've seen stage one stage two three and then now four okay now if it looks lower why play it long again because we're talking about swing trading we're not talking about core trading we'll talk about core trading in a minute so this could be a swing tomorrow just right here long over the base with Two, there are two places to put the stop three but I would use one or the other either, either this or that you don't have to put it all the way down to the top to the bottom so there's two places to to use for a stop so one is right here and one is down here um, but that's interesting to me so what I do is I go right here and I and I copy and paste it or in this case I just typed it in and then after after I'm done I plug in the numbers in the spreadsheet right I plug in the numbers and then I see if it has enough reward to risk or not okay so that's how I know whether to post it uh, to play it and post it as a as a play for members or not okay EGBN then EPD that's kind of a one two three what I love about the EPD is the monthly chart oh my god does it look good looks phenomenal so again stage two the top is stage three the sell-off is stage four and then as you can see it, it went back into a stage two a stage one base right over the last three years and now it's looking up it looks phenomenal as a long-term play EPD so it's okay to, to get in it up here but I think it's uh, I'll tell you the truth it's not really that great of an entry up here it's too extended so I'm gonna wait for another play but EPD is not is more of a long-term play not a swing trade okay FL possible breakout moving average on the FL unfortunately is not pointing up so I already have an issue with it and then number two is as you can see it's breaking out into resistance so no point in looking at the hourly chart if I don't already love the daily does that make sense weekly might have bottomed sure looks higher on the weekly chart but um, it's pretty tough G poor possible climo 
here's the GPOR, and here's the four stage cycle for you. See it? You can see it nicely on the monthly. Is it really done? I'm not so sure that it's done. It could be getting close to being done. Let me see what kind of scale, anyways, what kind of scaling I have because the bars are very tiny here. Um, so it's probably not done. Can it be played swing? Yes, just to here, to the minor resistance and the declining 20. It triggered already today. I didn't, I didn't have it on my today's list, so I didn't see it, but it actually looks higher for a couple more days maybe to 4, 450 or so. So the thing to do would be to, to put it in the spreadsheet, see if it has enough reward to risk. 20 cent stop, and then about also 20, 30 cent target. So it hardly has enough reward to risk. Uh, HI is kind of the same, is, a, is like a little mini climo or retest of, a, of, a, of support, and then a transition A on the hourly chart, but I don't love it. Pets, transition A on the daily chart. Not bad, I like it. Um, maybe long over the base, but as you can see, it triggered already, has multiple green bars. So I'll, I'll watch the pets for the next entry. It's a transition A on the daily chart. Pets, nice monthly at the 200 MA. Down a lot to the 200 MA. Notice the four stage cycle. See it? Stage one, I don't know where stage one is. Is right here. Stage one, stage two, the top, stage three, the fall, stage four, and now it's trying to bounce back up. So pets, a QTT, transition A, but it's not very good. The right entry should be at or near the, the rising 20 where, when playing long, not far away from it. If it's far away, it's just not very good. Okay, so that's not very good. Again, I only spent about 20 minutes scanning, um, so I, I, I don't have a complete list, but this is just to, to just talk about a few items. Sale is a breakout with a shakeout. So for this, that's not bad. Entry right here, stop right here. Let's check on the hourly chart. Does it look good? It looks okay. It's not the best, but look, if it moves back up tomorrow, we'll have a, a rising 20 again. It's flat 20 at the moment, which is not good, but it'll be rising again. So I like it, long right here, stop right here. Now, what, what do we need to do? Find the target. Where's the target? This is coming from a long-term downtrend. You know what where the target is, right? If the stock is coming from a long-term downtrend, you look at the next larger time frame and you look for the declining 20. So that should be the target. You plug it in the, in the sheet and see if it has enough reward to risk. But since I like it, it goes on the favorites for tomorrow. Okay, so that's the sale. The uh, next one is the SSYS. It has a daily buy setup. I'm more interested in the SSYS as a long-term play. So I'm trying to find a way in it because I love that monthly chart. See the four stage cycle? You see it? And then now the stage one, it's been basing for four years now, almost four years. Yeah, four years. So it's looking up, looking higher. Um, and so it has a buy setup. Hourly says, nope, not ready. How do I know? Because I, as I said, it needs to have a, a rising 20. So it, it's still a declining 20. So I got to let it go and then do the next buy setup. So this doesn't go to the favorites just yet. And then Alta has also a buy setup, but flat 20. So Alta shouldn't be really on the list. All right. So for as of right now, I just have two items on the favorites for tomorrow. Okay. The shorts, same thing. BCRX triggered already today. So if, I tell you the truth, it triggered two days ago, but I didn't pull the trigger on it until today. So as a breakdown and sell setups on the hourly chart, but it's too late for now. I mean, it's not terribly late, but it's a little late. It triggered already. BCRX. Next on the list is big. What kind of a pattern is big? Let's get some responses. What kind, what's the name of the pattern on BIG? Going once, twice. Come on, guys. You know the answer. Of course you know. It is a cell setup, of course. Exactly. That's a cell setup. Did it trigger or not? Or you can call it a pullback. It's a counter rally. So it's like a pullback and an uptrend, but it kind of did it trigger the sell setup or did it not? And the answer is it already did. When did it do it? Right here, a couple of days ago. Stop right here. So we're late here. We're late, but look, it looks good still. Another sell setup maybe tomorrow looks good. But this is something that you have to watch at the open pretty much. And target would be the prior lows here. 
So this is good, but you have to kind of watch it. I don't think I can put my order in the system. I could, 20, excuse me, 25 stop right here, but it's a, it would be a big stop. So I go ahead and put it on the favorites, but I don't think this is gonna be, uh, I'd have to watch it. Now, why do I create a favorites list? Because the favorites list is what I, I create the orders the night before. I don't even have to do it. You know, I just do it the night before. I, if the play is set up, ready to go, I don't wait. I just put the orders in the system the night before, GTC, good till cancel, and then the next day if the play triggers, then I'm in. So that's why I create a favorites list, okay? Uh, so BIG, I don't think I can create an order for it because I said you got to watch that cell setup on the hourly chart. Uh, DPZ, cell setup also. Uh, not bad, but notice the hourly 20MA is pointing up. It's not bad. It's starting to kind of, you know, maybe flatten out a little bit. Where's the entry for it? Right here. Stop right here, which should also be the sell setup on the daily chart. Again, it's not bad. It's not bad, honestly. HZO. HZO is a, was a gap down a couple of days ago. It's entering the, so it ended the stage two uptrend, and now that's stage three, and it's starting to, to crack starting to break down on the monthly chart. So this looks lower. We need to see to find the sell setup on the hourly chart. So that's not going to be something that goes on the favorites because again it doesn't yet have a sell setup in place. It doesn't have an an or an entry in place. This is a breakdown. It's pretty tough because it's a sloppy base, but it looks lower on every time frame, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, monthly sell setup, 1 2 3 1 two, three, triggered today already, or triggered on this breakdown here a couple days ago. I like it lower. I just have to watch it and look for an entry off the hourly, probably, but it doesn't have a, an entry in particular. Mankind looks lower. Uh, it's not a very fast moving stock at the moment. It's also at support. So I don't really love it, but it does look lower. I know what some of you are thinking. It's a $1 stock. Yeah, if it's available, you can short it. I've shorted eighteen dollars, eighteen cent stocks that went to one penny, right, and went to zero. Some of them. Look at ZFG on a couple of days ago. It was a dollar forty or a dollar. I mean a dollar fourteen or a dollar fifteen. See, it looks good still. Where is the target? Till it goes to zero, probably, or if it accelerates. Does that make sense? So it doesn't matter. I've made more money on penny stocks than I have on regular stocks. Now that would be that would be a lie, but I'm just saying, you know doesn't the price of the stock doesn't matter to me what matters to me is the pattern and whether it has enough reward to risk or not um, NTNX would be a base breakdown under the base stop above it what's wrong with it there's only there's one thing that obviously is not great about it which is my friends is the flat 20 flat 20 means low momentum it means breakdowns don't usually follow through from flat 20 right but it looks interesting as a watch for, for over the next couple of days if the 20MA starts to point down. How, how will it start to point down? If it can base here a couple more days, it will start to point down. So I do like it, but it needs a couple more days. PVH is a, a breakdown plus a 1, 2, 3. So that looks good. It's breaking down also on the larger time frames, monthly, weekly. But the hourly doesn't have an entry. For a sell setup, you need to enter right here, and that's not a good sell setup. For a breakdown, it needs to base, and so that we don't have a base. So this is pretty good on the daily, but really bad on the hourly, so we just got to watch it tomorrow. I have to watch it, okay? But it doesn't go on the favorites. SBH is a sell setup triggered already a couple days ago. SBH. It just doesn't have enough reward to risk. Otherwise, I like it. It definitely looks lower to me on the daily on every time frame, weekly, monthly, that looks lower. Just again, doesn't have a, a lot of reward to risk, unfortunately. SM sell setup, look at the hourly. Is it ready based on the hourly chart? The answer is, you don't need to answer, because uh, me, because it's clear, it isn't. It's got a rising 20. So what do I wait for? I wait for it to maybe come in, break down, and then give me another sell setup. Like so, off the declining 20. Or if it breaks down in bases, that does it too that will that would work for me too okay so sm nice daily but not ready on the hourly tell it triggered already today and it's ready to go on the hourly meaning i can put an order for it right here in the system tonight short stop right here but look at the size of stop 40 cents 50 cents 
what kind of a target does it have? 50 cents also. So about one to one. We said we want two to one minimum. So that doesn't meet that criteria. So that's the issue. Yelp, I want to show you now Yelp because it's a long-term short that I, that, that I like on Yelp. But does the daily look bearish? No. So here's the, we'll start off with the monthly. That's the monthly on Yelp. Looks definitely lower to me, back to 20. That's what I think on Yelp. For sure looks lower. But does it look ready? Weekly sell setup, good. So, so short under the green bar. Does the daily, is it ready based on the daily chart? No. Daily is in an uptrend and has a buy setup. So we gotta wait for it to maybe base or see the buy setup fail, then we can do under the buy setup, stop right here. Or if it comes in a little bit, then we can do the next sell setup. So this is something just like I do on swing trading, I, I wait for the hourly to line up with the daily, hourly and daily. For long term trading, I wait for the daily to line up with the with the monthly and the weekly. Does that make sense? That's what I, th that's why I have the Yelp on there. I, I only put it on there to show you as an example, but I, I, it's not ready for tomorrow. So monthly looks great to me, looks beautiful, short to 20 bucks. Weekly has a good sell setup. So what am I waiting for? The daily to line up with the other two time frames. All right. And ZUO looks lower, flattish 20. Weekly sell setup. Oops. Weekly sell setup also. That's not bad. Hourly doesn't really have a pattern in particular. Can put the entry right here, stop right here. But I don't think it's good enough. So I'm going to pass. So the shorts, so far I only have one. <laughs> On the favorites so uh, that's why you know you have to understand it really does take you have to have the experience and the um, and the time to find these plays the good thing the good news is honestly if you're in the strategic swing trader program I find them for you you just you know you you just earn as you learn right or you learn as you earn so you don't have to spin your wheels and spend so much time scanning, but it's good for you also. If you have the time, go for it. Scan, try to find the plays on your own, check with me and, t and get my, see my, what I think of, uh, of the plays. And then this way, uh, you, you learn as you earn, as I said, you learn as you earn, which is kind of what I like my students to do the most. All right. Okay, any questions about anything that I've covered so far? You guys let me know. Uh, so Don, question on earnings. Y you check out all the earnings stocks that are coming out every day and then call your call out my picks. That's correct. Y y Don has a question on the earnings plays and that's what I do. I, I go over the list of the earnings, stocks reporting earnings, and then I, I have a whole process for it. I sort them by sector by industry and by volume and then I go over the list and then I find the picks okay I find the plays and then those are the ones that I call um, in terms of you know as earnings plays okay uh, what was I gonna say I was gonna say something uh, I forgot what I was gonna say but okay any other questions let me know all right. Uh, how do you how how long do you usually hold your swing trades for? I usually hold them probably on average three to five days. The swing trades, the best trades are the ones that last over ten days, or more, because those it means they're working really nicely. If they last ten days or or more, uh, like you know something like the NLS, short. I don't know how many days it lasted, but if it lasts longer than ten days or Usually that's, those are the best for me. Okay, Don, that's a good question. How long do you hold your swings for? What else? Any other questions? How much does volume impact your scanning? Um, again, I just want to make sure it's playable. So I want, I want uh, about 500 or more. I like more. I like a million, two million. Uh, uh, shares per day traded but 500 or more I'm good with it these are the earnings plays for tonight see so far pretty good this is the these are the earnings plays which 
strategic swing trader members had the chance to participate in, with the exception of one play that I had, had the chance to participate in. Okay, and I, I have two different accounts. That's just one of them. So sixty-eight hundred bucks. I usually don't look at the earnings plays after the the close. I almost never do because I like to sleep well at night and I I look at them the next day. Anyway, in the morning, but uh, just you know, just showing you. Uh, how much money do you use per play? Do you use a formula? Yes, I do. 25k per play is my formula. So if you in uh, the global configurator in IB, if you go to to uh, file global configura configurator, go to presets, go to stocks, and I allocate 25k per play. Okay, 25k per play. You don't have to to do that. You can start with smaller initially, but you know after a while you want to up your size. If you know what you're doing and you're making money, obviously you want to up your size. All right. And so when I have that, it calculates the share size for me on the earnings place. When I have when you select the amount, it just calculates. So you don't even have to take out the calculator. It just calculates the share size for you, which is the beauty of using which is why I like to use IB interactive brokers for the earnings plays in particular but al but also swing trading in general I use IB I just like to separate the accounts for earnings plays versus for regular swings I don't like to mix the two all right any other questions are there any other questions all right wonderful um great I hope you enjoyed today's lesson everybody I hope you have uh, a great trading day tomorrow and the rest of the week. And if you did enjoy what we covered and you want to learn more about it, if you're on social media, be sure to check out the links in the description of the video. There's a link to the Strategic Swing Trader. There's a link to the Strategic Day Trader, which is where I we, we day trade. Uh, swing Traders for Swing Trading. Uh, so be sure to check out those links. If you have any questions, reach out to customer service. But with that said, I want to wish you a, a nice evening and I'll talk to you soon. Uh, take care, everybody.